Effective control of pests, such as insects, weeds, and diseases, and in the case of tobacco production, sucker control can only be achieved by using the recommended product for your problem at the recommended rate and application timing and using the correct method of application. So to clarify that, in terms of method of application, I want to focus on sprayer calibration. When we talk about sprayers, we may have a sprayer such as this, a larger sprayer, or a smaller three-point hitch type sprayer, or even a backpack sprayer. When we're looking at a large sprayer or a three-point hitch sprayer, we're talking about a significant investment that over time, if maintained properly, will consistently deliver predictable, consistent, accurate results, and you'll be happy with those results. When we have one sprayer that we use for weed, insect, and disease control, and also sucker control, it's tempting to leave the same type of nozzle tip in and use the same type of nozzle tips for every application. And at times, you can get acceptable control, but that control may not be consistent, and it could be a lot better. Changing nozzle tips doesn't take a lot of time, and you'll be well pleased with the results if you match the proper nozzle tip to the proper job. Typically, when we look at weed control and insect control, a flat fan top nozzle, and particularly in the case of weed control with some of our herbicides, a flat fan nozzle with some type of drift reduction technology is the most desired, most effective nozzle tip. In the case of disease control, a flat fan nozzle tip may be suitable, may be a holocone nozzle. However, in the case of tobacco production, and dealing with sucker control, the most effective type of nozzle is the full cone nozzle tip. When we look at application timing, there's a time when that pesticide is most effective. For weed control, uh, small actively growing weeds, you're going to get better control. You'll get less control if those weeds are bigger and stressed. Uh, for insects, diseases, sucker control, they're all good application timing. So you want to make sure to check product labels or recommended production practices. Finally, I want to spend most of our time on the correct rate. Uh, this has more to do than just the correct amount of chemical we put in the tank. Uh, that, is, that is important, but sprayer calibration plays a huge role. You can put the correct amount of a product in the tank and still not be satisfied with control if your sprayer is not properly calibrated. So what we want to demonstrate is the 1 1 28th acre method of calibration. It's the most convenient, quickest, and most applied method of getting accurate sprayer calibration. A lot of times when we get a new piece of equipment such as a sprayer, we may be more careful, pay more attention to details, make sure that we're doing everything we should. So you may say, well, I've already calibrated my sprayer, or I calibrated my sprayer last year. Uh, there's a high likelihood that that sprayer that you calibrated last year is not putting out the same amount. And there's even a higher likelihood that the more you think about it and think about what was going on when you calibrated that sprayer, that it was in fact two or three or four years ago and I guarantee you that that sprayer is not putting out the same as it was a few years ago. The nozzle screens are going to be dirty or clogged. The nozzle tips may be worn. You may have some leaks so you need to need to take the time to maintain that sprayer and get it up to good operating condition. Sprayer calibration shouldn't be viewed as a burden. Instead it should be viewed as a way that actually saves you money and saves you time. If a sprayer is not calibrated correctly and putting out too much chemical, you may have crop injury and you may have residue problems in tobacco. If you're not putting out enough product, then you're not going to be satisfied with the control or if it works one time, it's not going to be consistent the next time and you want consistency. Whether you're putting out too much chemical or too little, you're wasting money. Before we actually start sprayer calibration, the very first thing you need to do is properly clean your sprayer. Included in properly cleaning and checking your sprayer is remove all the nozzle bodies, nozzle tips, and nozzle screens. If you see screens that are excessively filled with trash, go ahead and throw them away, put a new screen in. When you take the nozzle tips and screens out, in addition to inspecting them for trash and damage, also inspect them for uniformity. There's 50 mesh and 100 mesh screens, so make sure you have the proper screen for the proper nozzle tip. 
Also check your nozzle tips to make sure that you have the same type of nozzle tip throughout the entire boom. Once you have the sprayer clean, fill it up with water, put the nozzle screens, nozzle bodies back on, and bring the RPMs of the sprayer up to the pressure that you'll be spraying. Turn the sprayer on and then check for leaks. Also check for the spray pattern coming out of the nozzles. If you see that any of the patterns are different than the other, if you see any patterns that aren't uniform, then stop, take that nozzle tip out, look for trash, put it back together, and if you can't get a good pattern, throw that nozzle tip away and put another one in. Once you have a clean sprayer that's in good operating condition, we're ready to start the sprayer calibration procedure. The first step is to measure the nozzle spacing. Often on a broadcast boom, this will be 18 to 20 inches. If you're not using a drop line, the most effective way to control suckers is to use a three nozzle setup. A three nozzle setup uses a center tip, usually a TG5 or similar, full cone nozzle directed at the center top of the plant, and then two smaller tips tilted in at an angle also at the top of the plant. These nozzle tips on the outside are usually smaller nozzle tips usually TG3 full cone nozzles. The advantage of this type of nozzle arrangement is it directs most of your product to the top center portion of the plant, resulting in better sucker control. Whereas with a straight broadcast boom, there's gonna be an equal amount of product on the row middles, as well as the top of the plant. This nozzle arrangement only works if the tobacco is straight up, if it hasn't been wind blown. If you have tobacco that's been wind blown, the tobacco is not in line, then some of the tobacco is going to be missed by this type of nozzle arrangement, whereas a broadcast boom is going to get those plants that are bent over. For a nozzle spacing for this type of nozzle arrangement, we can use row spacing, which should be the same as measuring from the center nozzle to center nozzle. This, this measurement may be anywhere from 40 to 42 inches. After you've measured nozzle spacing, take that measurement in inches and match it to the corresponding course length in feet. Next, select a site for your driving course. You need a tape and two flags. Flag the beginning mark and then using your chart and the length of the course in feet, Walk that distance. After you've laid out the course, get in the sprayer without turning the boom on. Drive the sprayer at the application speed and engine RPM that you will use to actually spray the site. When the sprayer passes the beginning mark of the course, turn on your stopwatch, and then when it passes the end mark of the course, record the time that it took to travel the entire length of the course. Repeat this step three times and take an average. This is the length of time that you will use when you do a catch for each nozzle tip. Next we'll do a catch for each nozzle. You'll need one or two pitchers marked in fluid ounces that will hold at least a half gallon. Turn the sprayer on, bring it up to the operating pressure and correct engine RPM. Then have someone with a stopwatch tell you when to place your pitcher under the stopwatch. In the time that it took for you to travel the course, you will do a nozzle catch. At the end of the catch, the person will tell you to remove your pitcher from below the nozzle tip. The number of fluid ounces in the pitcher for the nozzle catch corresponds to your spray volume in gallons per acre. If your nozzle catch is lower or higher than your target spray volume, then adjust your pressure accordingly to achieve your desired spray volume. However, check your nozzle rating and stay within the recommended pressure ranges. Remember to check your product label for the recommended spray volume. When you've achieved your desired spray volume in gallons per acre, your sprayer is calibrated. If you'll take your tank capacity, such as 200 gallons, and divide it by your spray volume of 50 gallons per acre, then the result is four. You can treat four acres at that rate. After you know how many acres you can treat with a tank full, then put your product into the tank. Check your product label to see if you need to add adjuvants in addition to the product.
sprayer calibration can be a little intimidating and it's easy to put off because it's something that we don't do too often. We may not be familiar with it, may not have a lot of confidence and then it takes time. But I think you'll find out that it doesn't take as much time as you think it does and you'll be satisfied with the results.